day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Johnny Antonio. Um, making this video today just to teach a little bit about cold rooms. Um, I am one of the co-founders, also uh, the, one of the mold inspectors, and I do a lot of the field work here at Ultimate Mold Crew. Um, but yeah, you can check us out at uh, www.ultimatemoldcrew.ca. Uh, for more videos, uh, you can also check us out on Homestars. Uh, just to type in uh, Ultimate Mold Crew, the Ultimate Mold Crew, M O L D, not uh, M O U L D. Um, yeah, so if you want to just check out some reviews, um, check us out. These rooms are designed to uh, store materials that are not porous. And when I mean porous, I mean like a sponge. So if you look at a sponge, if you put a sponge near water or in water, it absorbs it. So same thing with porous materials. Uh, they act like a sponge, so porous being paper, cardboard, uh, cold material, uh, things like that. You know, you don't want to store within these cold rooms um, unless they're inside uh, uh, plastic containers. Um, also, if you're going to have shelving in here, you want to make sure that uh, the shelvings are metal. Um, metal shelvings, plastic shelvings, things like that. With wood, you can actually restore it if it hasn't been impacted too much and it hasn't deteriorated. So, I mean, when you have wood inside cold rooms, uh, it's always best to encapsulate or, you know what, just take them out, take out the wood. Um, you gotta keep it because it's supporting lights and you have no other way of putting in a light fixture. Keep the wood but encapsulate. And again, um, another fact, so with these rooms, um, they tend to uh, sweat. Don't mind my, my pointy stick thing here. Um, these rooms do tend to sweat. Right now it's time to come off because we've already applied our product much worse before. Um, so these rooms do tend to sweat. Again, these rooms are designed to, uh, a lot of people put cheese, uh, wine bottles, uh, um, you know, uh, cans, things like that. And I mean, if you're gonna store cans, again, the paper around the can is a porous material, so you wanna remove that. You just label it with a marker or something. But again, uh, these rooms do tend to sweat, which is completely normal. Um, the problem in this cold room was that uh, up here they had uh, a framing board, a big piece of OSB, which is the, by the way the worst type of material you can keep in a cold room, OSB material. Um, it tends to contract both very fast, uh, very quickly, and uh, it's just a big no-no. So unfortunately these rooms are semi-blocked, as you can see these two holes up here. Um, as mentioned, uh, these two holes should be within the cold room. Uh, there should be some sort of exchange. Even one's okay, but if you have two, it's better. Uh, you want air exchange coming in, um, and then you have one air coming out. Um, even if it's just one, it's okay. Um, again, that all depends what you're gonna be storing in here. If you're gonna be storing a lot more items, then obviously, you'll, it's better to have a two. So A, these rooms get humid. Uh, B, the temperature's always changing in here, so um, you know it's very random. Uh, so you don't want to store any materials in here that are you know, porous, that absorb moisture, like a sponge. So when you think porous, think sponge. It absorbs uh, moisture like a sponge. Um, but, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a little bit about a cold room for today. Uh, again, I'm Johnny Antonio, and uh, keep watching for more videos. Thank you.